every house has a story to tell. Mm -hmm. And I'm just telling that story. Right. And I'm putting light on it in a different way each time. Because I have to focus on the house, the product, and not about trying to get a sale. Jenny, I'm so excited to welcome our next guest today on the Infinite Impact Contest. We've got world famous real estate TikTok dance. Oh, wait. Oh, that's our producer. We actually have Rowena <laughs> Healy. <laughs> She is an expert marketer, but she actually sells a crap ton of real estate, too. Yes. You know, um, when we were talking about guests that we wanted to have, and um, we were talking about, okay, who in our market are genius marketers? Mm -hmm. uh, really, her name was the first one that came up, yeah. so I immediately reached out, and uh, so I'm super excited to, to have you here, Rowena. Thank you so much for having me. Love it. Love yes. It. Yeah, we're going to have fun today. Well, let's start with that. Let's start with the marketing. What okay. is your marketing background? How have you applied it to real estate? Awesome. So I was actually a marketing major mm -hmm. and I have an MBA from schools outside of Alabama. So I'm not going <laughs> to say who they are, right? Um, and I was a banker for the first part of my career. About 10 years I was a banker. And I was really good with customers, so they put me customer facing. Changed from banking and I was a member of a private club, a summit club in Birmingham. And then um, was doing lots of marketing for the club. Um, it was 1996, you guys. The um, Olympics were in Atlanta. The men's U.S. soccer team was here at Legion Field. I put on a slew of activities for that week at the Summit Club. And in doing so, I was getting noticed about my marketing and my expertise in marketing. And one of the lawyers at Johnston Barton Law Firm asked me to come to his office. Well, he recruited me as their first professional marketing director and recruiting director. So that was how I got to really use my marketing degree in my profession. Uh, from there, I started different things. I did Legal Marketing Association, Legal Re Recruiting Association. Those were not in the state of Alabama. I brought them to Alabama. And about that time is when I met Missy Hurd. And she was a marketing director at Brassfield & Gorey. And we were in the same organizations. And so we just became friends. My career continued on um, outside of the law firm. I was in a forensic accounting firm. And then I started my own marketing firm. I had a firm called Marketing 24-7. Uh, the name didn't require me to work 24-7, although that's what I ended up doing. <laughs> um, we understand. Yeah. I focused on professional service firms, so I worked with lawyers, accountants, insurance folks, not so much in the retail. Uh, so that was my niche and continued to grow that, had children along the way. Um, and let's kind of tell you about Missy here. So she continues her career. She switches firms, uh, companies, and she starts her own marketing firm. And, but she's in what I call the as-built industry, commercial construction. And fast forward, she becomes a realtor. Now, we have lost touch with each other at this time. And then I decide uh, to be a realtor. And I reached out to a common friend. We were having lunch. And Sandra Cox said, hey, did you know that Missy became a realtor a few years ago? I'm like, no way. I'm going to reach out to her. <laughs> and the match was made. And Missy and I partnered up. I went to Realty South. And it's been great. So, you know, I like to do the marketing. I like to do the social media. I'm the one thinking and moving forward um, kind of strategically out front. And Missy has all the other skills from A to Z to be an excellent realtor. And so I kind of piggybacked with her. And so match made in heaven for both of us, really. What I absolutely love about this story, and I didn't know a lot of this stuff. Okay. So um, uh, we touched briefly before on some of your background, but uh, you, you just made some of the most boring things sound so fascinating. Oh. <laughs> Forensic accounting. <laughs> yeah, that's difficult. Legal marketing. Yeah. Yeah. All I could think of was all the compliance I would totally fail at. Well, so I remember uh, those days working for a law firm being a marketing person, recruiting person, and partners were coming to me, and we had memos, memorandums. Y'all remember this? Oh, Slide yeah. Slide them under the door. Memorandum would come back that I would have written about a marketing thing and be red ink all over the place, you know, because the lawyers are writing legal ease all day long, right. and they are great, and I'd be like, oh, my gosh, I was just telling you about a party. <laughs> <laughs> I used to work for a defense firm years yeah. and years ago when I was in college. Yeah. 20 attorneys. Oh, yeah. 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 So we had about 55 <laughs> lawyers. But from that between, um, you know, so I was looking around the country. I always do. I kind of look for things that aren't in my hometown. And that's when I discovered Legal Marketing Association was out there. Legal Recruiting Association was out there. And I would go to Atlanta and I served on the board of the Southeast Legal Marketing Association. And I'm thinking, why can't I bring this to Alabama? And I did. And so it was great. Those organizations still exist. We did it in a committee format. 
And I would go outside the state to different universities and law schools and put a panel together of legal recruiters. And we would talk about why you, you need to come practice as a young lawyer in Birmingham. Mm -hmm. So I was selling Birmingham to them, basically. Right. So instead of recruiting, I'm marketing to the law school. I'm marketing to the, to the recruit. And uh, it worked out well for Birmingham. Well, I, so you definitely have leadership skills oh, <laughs> because if you are um, uh, such a forward thinker as far as, hey, we need to bring this mm -hmm. to, to Alabama. Um, so love that. You know, very few people have leadership skills. So and... I try to find those opportunities to learn that. Um, you know, I was pretty good as a child to pick those out. I was a cheerleader and I became the captain of the cheerleaders early on and stuff like that. But I really want to embrace those around me, whether I'm forming a committee and kind of leading that way or forming a cheer squad or whatever it is. And I try to teach my 17-year-old boys that too, you know, lead by example, find things that aren't done locally that you can do and be creative with it and, you know, put your passion to it. Right. Um, the other thing that I did... Well, it's working because it um, you probably don't know this, her seven... Well, she has twins, but... Um, one of her sons is a golfer. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. So, yeah, we just came back from the um, Hurricane Junior Golf Tour National Championship. Um, he qualified for that tournament last year by placing between second and fifth in a, in a qualifying round. And then my other son rides horses. He's a state champion for um, show jumping, and uh, he's gone to some A-rated shows, and he's enjoying that a lot, too. Oh, that's yeah. so good. Yeah. Romina, tell us, uh, with your marketing background and then coming into real estate, did you have to kind of shift your mindset from marketing to sales? And is there a difference between the two? Oh, absolutely. Marketing and sales are two different things. I see myself as a marketing professional more so than a salesman. I try to take care of all the marketing and it falls in line that the sales take place. Taking care of the client is about marketing, right? I say, and someone else actually uh, talked about this to me, a client, every house has a story to tell. Mm -hmm. And I'm just telling that story. Right. And I'm putting light on it in a different way each time. Because I have to focus on the house, the product, and not about trying to get a sale. If that right. makes sense. Preach. Absolutely. Okay. So we both strongly believe that every house has a soul. Oh, and part of that needs to just be revealed. Yeah. So yeah. that it can actually connect with, you know, the right person. That's exactly what I'm saying. Yes. Every story, has, every home has a story to tell. Right. You know, Absolutely. Because it does have a soul. And I think that's another reason that I feel like you stand out. Oh, thank you. Um, in your thank marketing, you. for sure. Yep. Um so I have a million questions. Yeah, so. I know, I know. I, <laughs> Let it roll. Well, I love that. I love that you started, and I just I can't tell you how much I love that you said the house is the product. Yeah. Because I think we forget that I, you know a lot of agents service is important, mm -hmm. and people come back to us or even hire us because of the oh, services absolutely. that we provide. But the houses are the products. Mm -hmm. My fiance and I were riding through Hoover a couple of weeks ago. And we passed um, these the parking lots on like John John Hawkins Parkway. Mm -hmm. We so we saw one parking lot. Uh, this was on a Sunday, so okay. big day, and they had tons of sales associates walking around. They had the big blue streamers and balloons mm -hmm. and the wacky inflatable arms guy. And then the next car lot we saw right next to it had no activity, very few cars on the lot. And look, I'm willing to give them the benefit of doubt. Maybe that parking lot, their deals are so good, their financing is so good <laughs> they didn't need all that, that they just have sold out of their product. <laughs> but the impression that it left on me was, wow, there is enthusiasm and yes. energy for around this product. Yeah. So if I was in the market to buy a car, that's the first place I would go. So talk yeah. about how do you market listings? So in that way, I want to start with the highest quality professional photos, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, photos, drone, video. It doesn't matter the price point. I'm going to market it the same way. I have a particular photographer that I like. We're in the groove together. It's more teamwork, right? right. You find your business partners. Um, staging. Some homes need to be staged. Others don't. If it's a professional staging or the individual that owns a home stages real well, but, you know, we go through the whole declutter, clean up, get it ready, make it look good, polish up everything. Just paying attention to the details. I know that uh, Missy and I have bought a lot of light bulbs. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when I Making see, them all one color, the same color. Exactly. <laughs> For me and Missy, that's just an extra touch that we're going to do, right? So we're paying attention to photography, staging, lighting. Um, 
And then like this time of the year, I like to put some swags up for holidays or stuff like that, some greenery out. And we just keep doing the extras um, to make it work. Yeah. And you, you have a digital marketing background as well. I do. Um, so for a short while, I was in digital marketing. Um, to me, that was truly sales. It was a bit harder for me mm -hmm. because I want to do the marketing and I don't want to do the sales. The products that I was selling were all digital. Um, and I am pretty good at selling content marketing. Um, and I know how to do blogs and uh, rich content on websites and SEO and all that kind of stuff. But I haven't really embraced that with Missy on our uh Short four years. This is the beginning of my fifth year with Missy. So, um, well, it, it's working because you're highly visible online. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. We even checked your Google reviews and what. To oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not good at that at all. No, you are. Okay. So, you, Missy and they were I over are not good 40, with, weren't there? Oh, yeah. my gosh. Yeah, they're over 40, which is phenomenal for an agent. Okay. So, we had, um, I think through the end of last year, 191 families that we had served. This year, we're on the cusp of something about 40 closings, 40 to 45. Fantastic. Um, you know, we went from 11 million in sold, sold volume to 18 million the last two years. We just hit 21 million. There you go. We'll be about 24, I think, That's 23 so by the end of the year. That's a huge difference between last year and this oh, year. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. The number of families that we're serving, it keeps growing. And with that in mind, you know, we have to look to do, do other things. So sometimes the follow-up that we have with clients and asking them to do a review, we're lacking on that a little bit. Well, you know? so are so. they. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, and then you feel like, you have to ask a couple yeah, of times. Yeah. And so, yeah. And, and the phone rings and someone else calls and your attention goes there. Oh, yeah. So yeah. we definitely understand that for sure. But um, one of the things that um, I have found helpful, if you ever want to, to, to do something like this, is to have a contest. And usually in December is when I do it for Christmas oh, cash. Very nice. And say for um, every single time that you uh, put a review on one of these and have all the links yeah. that you send to them, then um, you'll be entered, entered in. into a drawing. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I love that idea. So, and yeah. people are so happy to do it. Yeah. They Haven't really are. Before. Really yeah. creative. Love so, that. So, um, and, and then you'll get a bunch at one time, and then I'll forget to ask again <laughs> for the rest of the year. <laughs> And, and then, then we here we are December again. Yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> so the first episode that we did at this podcast, uh, Jenny and I put our results for personality tests together. And we actually talked about uh, people forming teams and the different mm -hmm. personalities. It sounds like you and Missy have your roles carved yes. out pretty well. Yeah. So how do your personalities fit together? So Missy is a very caring person and she negotiates really well. Um, I get excited, a little bit exci too excited sometimes, right? So the calmness in me isn't there, but the energy is there, and Missy can calm me down. So it's the you know back and forth and the balance that really works between us. So can I guess? Go for it. <laughs> I already know. I already know. I see. <laughs> No, uh, that's Missy. Missy's an SC. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Missy is an SC and you're a DI. Okay. So um, it's because you've got the leadership skills naturally, it just comes natural to you. And uh, you have the high energy yeah. for the I part. And there's probably just really no stopping you whenever <laughs> um, like you're yeah. just going to do something. And then Missy comes in and is that calm to your chaos. Yes. Yeah. So said really well. I totally, uh, I, I live that life. I know what it's like in there. <laughs> All the ideas you probably uh -huh. have. Can't stop them. <laughs> it's so much fun to us. And um, we just did our spiritual ones too. And, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fun. Yeah. Um, but it is, because um, I made a comment on that podcast that when people team up together, it can, it, oftentimes coaching agents for as many years as I have, it doesn't normally work out. Yeah. I put one team together um, and introduced each other that are still together today. Um, gosh, how long ago was that? It was a really long time, but it was Collier Swecker and um, and Mark Carlisle. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mark actually has now moved to, to Texas, but they do still work together. Um, and he's the SC, and Collier was the DI. yeah. And he okay. Collier is a, an ID, really. He leads with his eye more, but um, and he's an attorney by trade. But oh, they just ended up working really well. Nobody else has ever worked out. <laughs> 
can't never get else. them in there. It doesn't work. Well, <laughs> it, mainly because there are so many high eyes that are in real estate, uh-huh. and then they end up going on all the appointments together, and the productivity doesn't double like yours have really grown. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, they're just doing the same task that one person could do. They just do it together. Oh. And, yeah, that's not the purpose of a team. Right. Me and Missy, when we first started, I said, look, I'm going to draw on my strengths, you draw on your strengths, and let's bring it together. And it works. Mm-hmm. So we cover each other's weaknesses, and it doesn't look like we have any. Yeah, that's beautiful. So bring it out. Yeah. So do you have a written roles agreement? No, we do not. Okay. I, I'm always curious about that. Yeah, we make I, it happen. <laughs> we should, but we don't. We ha- but you we did have happen. the discussion because you said, hey, these are my strengths, yeah. these are your strengths. And and they change over time a little bit. They shift. But sure. generally, you know, I like A to L. She does M to Z really great. She can do it all. I can do it. But let's make it work for both of us. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. So does does one person show? Do you, do you go on showings together? Do you go on appointments together? So we probably do most listing appointments together. Mm-hmm. I probably do the majority of the showings. I boots on the ground, wearing out the tires, getting new tires on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just went to the mechanic yesterday to get that quoted. But um, it, it works best that way for us. And I don't like being behind the, behind the computer. Not that Missy wants to, but she's excellent at it. And um, so she's the queen of search. And we can put those CMAs together and just get it out there really quick. What Do, do sellers love that you guys come in as that one-two punch? I think so. We call it two for one. <laughs> <laughs> two agents for the price of one. And um, they get to know us really well. And they can quickly assess our strengths and what we're doing, and we don't have to carve it out for them exactly, but we always tell them we're both here for you, for whatever it is. We quickly set up group texts, whether it's just the husband or the wife or whatever. If they don't want to text, it's typically not email because it's just not fast enough, but it's a phone call. And we know who we have to call mm-hmm. to get their attention. We know what times kind of uh, the clients like to be called, and it just works. So talk about, if I heard you correctly, it was 11 maybe last year and then 20 million this year. Is that what so you're... So it was um, in 2020, it was 11 million. 2021 and 2022, right above 18 million Got each. It. This year, we're right at 21 million and closed. We have a few more deals coming in December, hopefully some more um, after the three that we have solidified. And we could potentially reach 23, 24 million this year. And have you implemented new systems to keep that going as we've got a market that's that's down historically or, or just past referrals, all this stuff? Google Sheets are my friend. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could do it all in a CRM and make it work or some other systems, but I do best with Google Sheets. I do too. <laughs> and we are gravitating and moving towards other things and having better systems in place. I get super excited about things and then forget to do the systems, right? <laughs> So I need a great Am I operational a manager. Exactly. <laughs> I need a great operational manager that can jump in for Missy and I both and yes, and you robust. Do. You, know. you couldn't handle it anymore. Exactly. <laughs> Only one agent at a time. Yes. <laughs> Understand. Everybody's it's so different. Yeah, everybody's so different. Mm-hmm. So it seems like you guys have really found a groove. Yeah. Kudos to you for being able to put that team together oh, and to you. make it work. Thank you. So um, a lot of kudos to Missy. You know she. It's a give and take, yeah. right? Right. You know, we debate things, we discuss things, we challenge each other. Uh, one of us has to back down. Yeah. <laughs> right. So you got your license in 2020. I got it at the tail end of 19, and my first closing was January of 2020, early on, like the second week, maybe. Wow. Okay. That's fantastic. Yeah. So you, this is this is all new with it changing yes. a little bit. It's yes. brand new, and yes. uh, which is going to be fine. You're going to adapt yeah. just fine, but... Um, it's amazing to me, um, uh, our broker told us recently that uh, I think he said 40% of Alabama agents um, have only been in the business less than four years. Oh, wow. And that. that is okay. a huge, huge amount yeah. of yeah. people. Yeah. So I, I think that makes the, the slowdown a little bit more hypersensitive right. than it was last yeah. time. And very intimidating. Right? Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, well, and one of our agents who is just got her license about the same time, maybe a little bit earlier, you know, she goes, I don't know what it's like not to have a house sell in four hours. Exactly. <laughs> 
<laughs> like, what is this? It's been for sale for three days. Right. right. <laughs> I get a little anxious with that. So, like, if we have something on the market for 30 days, which is very possible right now. Yeah, right? absolutely. Very nice yeah. homes, priced right, great uh, condition of a home, but it's still on the market for three, four weekends. Right. You know, it's the tail end. We just hit Thanksgiving, so it may have come on around Thanksgiving, and we're still working it. So, one thing that I like doing is hosting open houses. And, you know, there are times that Missy's at an open house, I'm in an open house, and we have other agents hosting open houses for us. But we're on a, on a multiple um, text group just chatting about everything and what's going on. Right. And what I like about that is, you know, I learn from other realtors that are at my open houses. And yes. so um, hosting open houses at our listings. And so we also try to change brokerages at times for that. You know, so Missy and I are Realty South, but why not have an EXP agent or an ARC or a REMAX agent at another right. house with us? This Friday, we're doing an agent open house, um, and we've got three different brokerages, three different homes near each other, all in Ballantrae. And we're going to be definitely cranking at each of ours, but I'm going to go see the other homes right before I, you know, go to mine. And right. We'll make and, it happen. Uh, I have sent that out to people. Oh, awesome. So, yeah. Thank yeah. you. No, that's great. And absolutely, collaboration is just so important, no mm -hmm. matter... It doesn't matter what your your brand is, or, right? You know, um, uh, we have to stick together. I feel like in the mm -hmm. market, and uh, you know, Chad and I have been friends and doing that for gosh, so we have the same story. Chad and I both got our license in nineteen ninety seven, okay. and I'm talking about our friend Chad Beasley. And so for years, we've been you know sounding boards and uh -huh. have you know always chit chatted about the market. And now you know we're lucky enough to get to work together, yeah. but. Um, it's you can get in a bubble sometimes if you're only talking to the same people. Interesting. <laughs> Right. And that's kind of what I did when I first started. I went to a lot of other agent open houses. I went to a lot of open houses all across the board, different price points, different areas, watching different realtors and what they did and what the product looked like, what mm -hmm. the house looks like, getting to know it. And even when I didn't really need to, when other agents weren't doing it, when the market was hot, I was still doing agent open houses, you know, because I wanted to know who those agents were in that little area. And they will come out and support you. So that was really important to me. I'm not just networking with consumers or buyers or sellers. I'm networking with the realtors all the time. Right. Absolutely. Um, and that was something new because I sold in Mississippi for five years before I moved here. Mm -hmm. And we didn't do agent open houses. Oh, really. I was like, well, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> Exclusive right. tour. I know. Yeah. And I, I, I told this story before. And uh, if you've heard it, I'm sorry. Um, but I went to uh, an open house, an agent open house in Brook Hollow. And one of uh, my friends said, hey, you know, to the host, I want to introduce you to my friend. She just moved here from Mississippi. And she said, nice to meet you. Stay out of Brook Holland. And I'm like, oh, oh well, welcome to Alabama. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. I know. Then, you know, to me, I learned from a lot of realtors. You know, there are local realtors that were refer work to Missy and I. Right. Um, you know, they don't want to go to the lake. I have a second home at uh, Lake Logan Martin in Pell City. I'll cover the lake for you, you know? Right. Um, there are realtors that aren't familiar with Trustful. I live in Trustful. You know, but sometimes they just don't want to go out as far as we do. Right. You know, we have sold in Jacksonville, Alabama, and we have sold in Vina, Alabama. Yeah. You know, from border to border. So. <laughs> I love it. It sounds like y'all you, weren't afraid to work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go figure it out. Get it on the map. Get a pin drop there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so we're over 20 million now. What's on the horizon? What are you guys looking forward to next Woo. year? You know, with the market shifting and changing, mm -hmm. um, I hope we can improve our systems, right? Get some more um, details in place that we need to. Um, I want to blog. I don't know about doing podcasts. Maybe I have to come out here more often, get Missy out here too. Um, I enjoy being creative. So there are some things marketing wise, print media wise, um, that I'm looking forward to doing. Numbers wise, I mean, I'd like to shoot for 25 million. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. Yeah. See if we can do it. Well, and okay, I like how you said, see if we can do it because the goal has to be exciting. Yeah. To keep you up every yeah. day and working toward it. Yeah. So, so even I, if you came in at 23, first, you'd be just such a winner. <laughs> <laughs> when I first became a realtor, I was asked by my broker a couple times. So we have a program called Goldmine Pipeline. And my answer was, I wake up every day thinking I'm unemployed. I Very really good. do. We are unemployed. Mm -hmm. We uh, don't earn income until we close. A lot of clients still don't know that. They think we're getting paid by Realty South. Right. I'm like, no, we have a lot of expenses. We pay them. 
they're not paying us anything. We work for our clients, and then because of the sale of the product, the home, that's when we're getting paid. Right. Um, so for me, I have that mindset. It's kind of stressful, but I do wake up every day thinking I'm unemployed. How am I going to change myself today to get to that next opportunity? Well, okay, that, that also, again, tells me that um, you lead with your D because we have to put consequences on ourselves um, that actually motivates us more mm-hmm. than the twenty-five dollars. Like I'm gonna, you oh, know, yeah. I'm gonna make twenty-five million gold today. Yeah. No, it's like okay, I am without work. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Who do I need to call? What do I need to do? Uh-huh. I've got to feed this family. <laughs> yep. I've got to get my boys through college. That's right. Yeah. Yes, they have expensive hobbies. You know? Yeah, especially I've got retirement on the horizon here. You know, right? So, all the above. What has that dynamic been like since you jumped in the business for your spouse and your family? What has Ooh. that been like? Okay, it's a challenge. Uh, my husband is, um, by education, a project manager, very detail oriented. That's not me, so opposites attract there too. Um, my boys grew up with me being in the car, um, you know, so what were they, about 12 years old? And they were doing a lot of activities, and I'm doing deals and making phone calls, and we're in the car, and they're listening to it, and they're like, Mom, is that you? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you know, because they never saw me at work before that. Right. But I can drive with them somewhere and be on the road going to a horse show, you know, golf tournament. We'd go to Mississippi, Tennessee, North Carolina, South Carolina, and they just hear it all along. And it's really, I mean, I feel at a loss without my phone because my phone is with me, you know. Um, it is my computer. I do everything on my phone. Um, hardly ever behind a laptop, uh, went to the office yesterday, used a laptop, turned it on for about five minutes, and it says battery low. I don't even have the charger with me. I'm like, okay, this is me, but my phone is charged, right? You get that too? Yeah. <laughs> Go figure that. Why are we having this laptop issue? Oh my gosh. Can I connect to the internet? You know. But the phone is my life. So the kids have watched me. Um, Preston has a little bit of interest in real estate. Not so much from being a realtor like me or doing residential, but maybe being an investor or looking at some other things. Um, so I'm really proud of him for thinking about that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've had him talk to a broker. I want to talk, have him talk to some flippers, some investors and stuff like that, kind of open his mind to different things. Because I came in at this at 55. They have a whole different career life ahead right. of them. Uh, and Clayton is still trying to trying to figure out things, you know, where he'd like to pursue his career. But um, maybe commercial construction. So... To them, it's, okay, I understand what my mom and dad do, and how can I do it for myself and do it a little differently? So my husband's really good with finances, project management, saving, you know, all that kind of stuff, and they've got those math skills from him, and they can figure out those Excel spreadsheets. Not my thing. I'm going <laughs> to stick with a simple Google Sheet and get a few uh, bars on my phone for it. But um, It sounds like your husband is mine, too. <laughs> <laughs> Keep us straight. <laughs> Yeah, um, we used to, I used to throw a lot of Christmas parties before we had children, and my husband would say, we've invited Rowena's hundred closest friends. Yeah. <laughs> That's the off heart. Yeah, yeah. So, a lot of fun. Oh, that is a lot of fun. My kids, yeah, I, I grew up with a dad who was a real estate broker my whole life, oh, and so my uh, family life as a kid was just like the movie Haunted Mansion where Eddie Murphy is like, we're on the way and everybody's so excited they're going on vacation. We just have to st- make this one, one stop <laughs> at this house. <laughs> and we're like, okay. no. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. So my husband and I are going out tonight <clears throat> and I need to be home at 530. And he knows me too. So my calendar is full with different stops. He knew I was doing this with you guys. And he's like, am I meeting you at the event or are we meeting at home and going together? I'm like, hmm, let me think about that. What's my schedule like? I'm going to make it home. We'll make it there by, I'll be home by 530. You know? yeah. yeah, well, you know what I did today. My fiance is very uh, new to the real estate game, obviously, okay. but mm-hmm. she knows what contingency means now. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. She's going to learn a lot more. Yes, she is. Well, Ruby, this is awesome. Oh, uh, it's so it's so great to talk marketing with you because yeah. we're marketing nerds too. Yeah. Um, so, and congrats on your quick success, and we'll have mm-hmm. to have you back when when Missy's able to come. Absolutely, awesome. I love that. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you on the next one.